So we're back with part three and we're going to take a look at um, finishing this model off. Some parts I will miss out but the main focus on this video is just to go through and show you guys how to create surface rust and of course rust streaking using a couple of um, rust colour washes. I'll also go through the details of how to uh, finish off the weathering tones using various other dirt colours to end up with a model that looks like this. So uh, before we get started with the process, um, the model itself has uh, had all of its transfers fitted. Uh, these were Railtech ones and I've also given everything a good coat of gloss varnish. I'm not going to cover the roof in this video as I've uh, previously covered paint chipping effects in uh, previous weathering ones so do check back through the playlist and you'll find a suitable video for that. So what we're going to start off with is using um, some washes both from uh, MIG which is the mid brown colour and I'm also using a light orange one from uh, AK Interactive and also as well you're going to need yourself some odourless spirits or thinners. So okay, the uh, first product we're going to uh, use is the orange colour rust and this process for this is actually relatively simple. What we want to do is we're just going to apply this in random spots all over the model in areas where you'd uh, expect these things to rust. As this is a, an actual wash you can actually use this for um, working its way around some of the shut lines and it works wonders in things like all the grills and vents and areas of uh, raised and sunken detail. Now at this stage we're going to grab ourselves a few brushes. Um, these are going to be now used for uh, blending the uh, colours into uh, the existing background. And it's just a case of just uh, dampening the brush with the odourless thinner and then you want to filter back the um, washes so they actually start to blend in with the uh, existing faded blue colour. There's really no wrong or right way about doing this, just when you start to feel that the uh, the paint no longer looks like a splodge and it's actually blended in then you can move along to the next part. Again we can do the uh, streaking with this so any areas where the rust is um, streaked down the body side just with, again with a damp brush you're just going to drag that enamel wash down the body sides. Keep also just cleaning the brush out as you go along to make sure that you're not going to end up with a complete mess of rust in areas where you don't specifically want it. And keep working away all the way along the model until you're happy with the end result. Okay, so we allowed the uh, orange one to dry for about an hour. Now we're going to move into the mid brown or mid rust colour. And uh, the process for this is pretty much the same. Again, we're going to go around in areas. This time we're not going to do great big splodges. You just want some nice fine dots just in the areas where it's going to contrast nicely with the orange rust. Again, as this is a wash, you can use this for picking out your vents and your grills and uh, door shuts and various other places of interest with raising the uh, sunken detail. So as I say, just work your way along the model and uh, once you've got this colour on, I'm going to set it aside for about 30 minutes and uh, this will allow the um, enamel wash just to cure ever so slightly. And then once again, back into the uh, odorless thinners and we're going to start just filtering those colours so they blend in nicely with the orange rust. And again, you can start streaking those down. But again, just uh, bringing that uh, paint dripping down the body sides.
And again, once this, uh, this layer is completely done, we just want to completely leave it to dry. And uh, that's pretty much at this stage of the rust complete on this uh, specific model. So okay, I've uh, done the chipping effects on the roof and I've also applied some of the uh, rust washes in various places on there as well. So moving on to the dirt colours, what we're going to start off with is just using the uh, Vallejo Air Range and this is a uh, dark earth and my aim here is just to basically go around the whole model and give a medium coverage of this uh, particular colour covering all the roof and all the body sides all in one go. Again, there's no wrong or right way of doing this as most of this paint that we're applying is going to be pretty much removed off the model once uh, we've gone around the whole thing. I'm sure many of you have uh, watched my videos in the past will know that I uh, like to just use the isopropyl alcohol method um, for removing all the paintwork and uh, that's done as a ratio of um, just one part isopropyl to two parts water. And that strength is more than enough to actually uh, start eating back down through that um, dark earth colour that we've just applied. So with this, this kind of allows you to create some nice gentle streaks at the same time of uh, trapping all the dirt into all the various shut lines and um, any areas of detail. You really get to see the benefits of um, this effect on how well it looks when you start removing the paint off these ends as seen here. And that's that colour done and what we're going to do is just set that aside to dry. So we're now into the second and final colour and for this I'm just chosen to use the uh, Vallejo Black Green. I particularly like this colour as I find it gives a great representation of uh, any piece of rolling stock that's been parked up or abandoned near trees, bushes, that type of stuff. So the colour tones on these work really well with the uh, Vallejo um, dark earth colour. So the process is exactly the same as it was before. All we want to do is just give the model a quick pass with the airbrush all over and then again once we've done that, we'll work it all back in, um, blending the tones and colours using the uh, mixture of isopropyl alcohol. Again, just remember to make sure you streak in the direction of which uh, all the rainwater would travel. And you can remove as much or as little as you like. And what I find that is good about this is that uh, you can strip it right the way back to the blue or you can go over it lightly and just uh, have it just so it filters in very lightly with the rem uh, remainder of any of the dark earth colour. Again, as we're using the um, isopropyl wash, this will also help all the dirt and tone colours just to filter down into all the shut lines, grills and vents and all the other pieces of raised and sunken detail. And there we go, so that's now all the dirt tones and all the rust um, applied to the body sides and uh, gives you a good indication of what to do when it comes to using uh, the filtering system um, of various colours and shades in both acrylic 
and of course the enamel washes. Now I did start filming the process of doing all the underframes on this particular model, however I have decided to hold back on that as I think that this um, that can make a really good video in itself, um, showing you all the detailing, different weathering products, different tones and colours that can be applied to all the underframes to get them as close to the realism as possible. So I'm going to save that one for a future video. So for now I'm going to leave this one here and um, hopefully I'll see you all again in a future video, whether that will be a new layout video uh, due up quite soon or whether I'll make another weathering one. Either way I shall see you all again soon in a future video.